Hello. When we're tracking objects, occasionally objects, uh, this tracking gives us a little bit of a problem. Maybe objects pass behind obstacles, or maybe if you have a couple of moving objects that you're tracking, that they may pass in front of each other or behind each other. Therefore, there may be some question about the identity of the two objects. You know, so if you see two people walking together and then they separate like this, well, is it did they sort of meet and then talk and then separate this way, or did they just pass in front of each other and carry on? So that's kind of the essence of the problem. And what we're going to look at now is not really the, you might say, the, the best or only way to solve this problem, but is one of the interesting ways to solve this problem. And we're going to have a, a look at this. We're going to do this in a probabilistic kind of way that keeps accumulating more and more evidence and tries to sort out what the um, the best assignment of identities to the detected targets are. And one of the, also the nice ideas about this is that we don't have to make that an initial, the, the, we don't have to make that assignment, we don't have to make that decision when we first collect the data, when we first observe a particular person or a particular target. Or here we're going to set it up in a, as a kind of probabilistic network so that we can propagate the evidence that we observe from frame to frame and ultimately make a decision when the probability gets to be high enough. So here's kind of the case of normal target tracking. So we've got two targets in this image in one frame, and then we kind of go to the next frame, and we've got a couple of targets, and then the question, and this sort of carries on for a while, and the kind of the question is, well, which way should we pair these two targets together, this way, or in this way, or this way, and this way? And in <clears throat> and in general, if you've got, you know, R targets in the first frame and L targets in the second frame, this is a kind of huge combinatorial type problem to be able to pair these together. The, that one is there sort of is because may, maybe we don't uh, even have necessarily have a, maybe we haven't even necessarily observed the target in the, the next frame. Maybe we need to match it with uh, something else, like maybe the target has disappeared behind an obstacle or something like that. Now, in many cases, we don't have a very tough problem because if the video is running fast enough, then targets hardly move from one frame to the other, and except in the cases where they overlap with each other, sort of pass it in front and behind, generally we don't have any real trouble with identifying which target in the first frame is the one that we, we can match with in the subsequent frame. Um, and as we've seen also, the Kalman filter is quite good at making these predictions. So we can use those predictions as well to sort of match up with 